and power. We thank you for you are the faithful God and most high Father, ancient of days, everlasting Father will lift you up. We thank you for you are the King of kings, the Lord of yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever. We honor you, Lord. Let your name be glorified. Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, against every spirit of misunderstanding. Father, power that are sent to me preach your word in the heart of men be commanded to be under bondage right now to the day of his resurrection in the name of Jesus of Nazareth every spirit that buy and sell every spirit that is not from God every token of the devil on fruit work of darkness we command you to flee before your Lord today be arrested and destroyed in the name of Jesus of Nazareth oh Lord my father I pray that you touch the souls of men and women under this ministration and message. Father, that they may receive the truth, transformed by the truth, and prepared, O oh Lord, for your coming. In the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth. We pray, O oh Lord, that the plan of the enemy concerning their lives and mine and the church be destroyed in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Glorify your name, O oh Lord. And for me, Father, as soon as I open my mouth, O oh Lord, let your Holy Ghost give me your utterance of your word. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. I pray that the flesh decrease today, that the Spirit of God increase in me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray that you go with my mouth in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. I pray, O oh Lord, that you give me a word and wisdom that the, uh, that the enemy cannot be, will not be able to oppose or come against today. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Lord. Amen. And as your word is going out, Father, we want it to be doing the word of conversion, repentance, 
repentance and salvation in the life of men as much as signs and miracles and healing in the name of Jesus of Nazareth Lord. Amen. Every soul and mind in sickness or disease today as you hear the word let the power of the Lord touch and heal you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. I am just representing the image of God preaching the gospel but the Lord does his signs and wonder because anywhere this message is preached the Lord will confirm and establish his word by signs and wonder these the people will know that the Lord is able he is the Lord indeed and the mighty God is his name who is able to fight for us diligently who is able to deliver those who are sick who is able to deliver those who are oppressed and heal the sick today father do your work in the name of Jesus Lord thank you for you are faithful glory be to your name Lord please Lord I beg you father I pray that all men listen attentively and you arrest the souls oh Lord to obey your word not to be the hearer alone but the doer of the word in the name of Jesus I pray that you will not permit any spirit to contradict your word in the life of your children Lord in the name of Jesus Thank you, Holy Spirit of God, for release your presence into this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen and amen. amen. Praise, the amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Today, we are going to be listening to this message that is titled through the help of the Holy Spirit. The ways of men. The ways of men. The ways of men, or oh, my way, because you are part of the men. My ways, your ways, our ways, the ways of men. The ways of men. Proverb, this is the new year, isn't it? And we said our watchword for the new year is this year for us is the year of fulfillment of promises for the obedient children. The obedient children. Those that are obedient are the ones that walk daily before him. The ways of men. The ways of men. The ways of men. If we will listen to this message diligently today and hearken according to it, we were going to be among the people that the Lord will fulfill his promises in their lives in 2014 in the name of Jesus. Amen. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7. Proverbs 16, verse 7. I want us to read from verse 1 to 7 for better understanding. I will read it from verse 1. The preparation of the heart belongs to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. We can prepare anything, but the answer comes from the Lord. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirit. I'm reading slowly and I will be pausing and continue for you to understand that. He said, all the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes. Which means according to individual people, whatever you do is right. Whether it's, whether it's correct or not, you believe it's correct. Everybody believes that what they do is okay. So everybody is right in his own eyes. But the law weighs the spirit. You see, the law weighs your spirit. Three. Commit your works to the Lord and your thought will be established. Commit your works to the Lord and your thought will be established. If your works are committed to the Lord, then the Lord will establish your thought, the purpose of your assignment. Verse 4. The Lord has made all for himself, yes, even the wicked for the day of doom. You see, it says the Lord has made all for himself. Everything the Lord has made is useful, including the wicked and the devil for the day of doom. In case you want to punish everybody, anyone. 
Remember in the book of uh, 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 Exodus, you know, when the children of Israel left the, the land of Egypt, they were passing through many cities and towns and villages and the Lord, or before the Lord brought them to the promised land. The Bible says they defeated all their enemies except five. The Lord left the five intentionally. He wants to leave the five nations. In case the children of Israel commit sin in the future, there will be the mechanism for correction. So this is what this one is saying. Say, the Lord has made all for himself. Yes, even the wicked for the day of doom. Because they will be useful. Verse, verse 5. Everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Every proud of the heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though they join forces, none will go unpunished. 6. In mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity. Which means in mercy and in truth, forgiveness or cleansing of sin is provided. And by the fear of the Lord, one at one departs from evil. Without you afraid of God, you will continually continue in sin. That's what that means. Verse 7. We are getting to where we are going. When a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. When a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemy to be at peace with him. Verse 8 says, Better is the little with righteousness than vast or plenty revenues without justice. It's better to have little with peace with God than to have abundance to become an enemy of God. 9. The end. A man's heart plan is ways, but the Lord directs his path. Our word, the way we are going to listen to the message today is from verse 7. I just purposely read the whole one to nine to us so that we can know what the Lord wants us to do as the year begins. When a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemy to be at peace with him. Now, to get to understanding of this, Proverbs 16 verse 7, we must know there is a man that has his ways, isn't it? A man that has his ways. And you remember that in verse 2, it says, All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes. You must understand verse 2 and verse 7. Everyone that is living, whatever you do, you have a right to do it. Somebody that divorced a wife, they have the right to divorce. They will explain you, they will tell you many reasons why they have to divorce their wife, despite that they are Christian and born again. Somebody that don't, you know, that is angry or fighting will tell you many reasons why he had to fight or according to his own ways. Somebody that made a decision that is wrong will tell you many reasons why he's making that wrong decision. Because of what? The ways of a man are always right before them. But verse 7 says, when a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemy to be at peace with him. In other words, when your way, look at that verse B of chapter, uh, verse, uh, sorry, the B part of verse 2. It says, but the law weighs the spirit. The ways of a man are always right before them, but the law weighs the spirit. Verse 7 says, when the ways of a man pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. A man's way pleases himself a man's way must please the Lord your way if your way only pleases you according to that verse 2 and it does not please the Lord you are looking for trouble because as the Bible says if the way of a man pleases the Lord it makes his enemy to be at peace with him if your way does, it pleases only you and does not please God if you are right in only your own sight and you are not right according to the word of God 
and according to the righteousness of the gospel, you will be looking, you will be a child of God and will be in the midst of many trouble. Christ has not called us to trouble. He has called us to peace, to joy, fulfillment, establishment, increase on heart and also glory in heaven. In other words, if the way of a man does not please the Lord and please only himself, he will find himself in multiple trouble. Even his friend will be his enemy. Even his friends will be his enemy. Instead of making friends, he will make a lot of enemies. Even those that are supposed to love him, they don't just know the reason why they just hate him. Because why? His ways does not please the Lord. What are we going talking about today? To be part of those people that the Lord will lift and make happy in 2014, your ways must begin to please the Lord. Your ways must begin to please, please the Lord. Now the question is, that everybody might be asking as you sit down in your mind, how can my way bless the Lord? Because I want all my enemies to be at peace with me. Why does Solomon said, my enemy be at peace with me? Solomon is one of the aged children of David. In other words, the child that David born when he was already spiritually mature and physically mature before the Lord. Solomon saw a lot of lifestyle in his father. He saw many things. He grew up to see a lot of things. He was close to David. He was a pampered child of David. That was why, how do you estimate that the out of all legi legitimate children of David, God, Solomon, that David will now choose Solomon to become the next king. He had many children that from the, from the woman that he married legally. But he chose a child, and God agreed with that. He was actually according to the decision of God. To choose Solomon, a child, from a woman that he took from another man. And he killed the, the man, Uriah. He took Bathsheba from Uriah. Uh, I mean, he took uh, yeah, Bathsheba from Uriah and he plotted for Uriah to die. The first child that they had together died and Solomon manifested after. And therefore, look at Solomon. He trained Solomon. He taught Solomon many things. And therefore, Solomon became very extraordinary wise. If you are a father, for instance, that maybe a father play football, for instance, and you see your son will be better in what you have done before. Because you, they will get experience from you. You have not, nobody knew you, but because you have been before. You, you see a father that was an accountant, and no, he, he didn't get, get any good thing from me. And you will see a son come, he will become a better accountant than the father. You see a son, a father that was a lawyer, and when he has a child that wants to be a lawyer, the child will be a better lawyer than the father. Why? Because the child will combine the education in the university plus the experience of his father and will make him a successful person in his career. Solomon had a lot of experience from his father, knowledge that he gained. Growing up also, he confronted a lot of things. And also he prayed to God, God, all I need is wisdom to lead these people. And from where what he gathered together, Solomon discovered that your ways, if your way only pleases you and does not please God, you will only have nothing but trouble, pain, sorrow, enemies, and short life. Therefore, our ways must please the Lord. And why did, David, why did Solomon say that? Because he saw that in the life of his father, David. In the book of First Samuel chapter 17, that is the first example I want to use. I might not be able to read it, but I will be quoting from the Bible. If you can write it down, you'll read it later for the sake of time. In First Samuel chapter 17, we discover that David became someone that went, a young boy, a teenage, young teenage boy, went to the battlefront and from there became a fighter. He was not a trained fighter. He just found himself there because he believed that he fought some bear and killed some bear and lion. 
that wanted to consume his, his sheep. Therefore, he believed that battle is like that. You don't just go to war because you have destroyed some animals on the field, and therefore you think human being is the same. So they tried to convince him not to, but he insisted. He said, don't you know that I've killed some bears and some lions that wanted to eat my father's sheep? Therefore, I'm able to go to any war. The Bible said they put on, to him, on him the jacket. It was so heavy on him to protect him. So he had to go without any protection. Against the Philistines. Amen. Amen. And he defeated the giant of Philistine that was called Goliath. Against the Philistines. From the beginning, from the onset, the Philistine has always been the enemy of Israel. But the ways of David pleases God. Look at chapter 29 of 1 Samuel. In chapter 7, he became opposed. He fought against Philistines. Isn't it? And with Philistines, the land of Philistines has always been a constant enemy of the Israelites. They were the ones that captured the heart. Isn't it? Yes. They have always been fighting and defeating if God wanted to punish the Israelites. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 29 and see what happened to David there. 1 Samuel, sorry. 1 Samuel 29. 1 Samuel 29. Can somebody read from verse 4 for me? Uh, verse 1. Very, I will read from verse 1. Don't worry. Amen. Then the Philistines gathered together all their hammies at Apec, and the Israelites and come by the fountain which is Jezreel. And the laws of the Philistines passed into review by hundreds and by thousands. But David and his men passed in review at the rear in Achish. Verse 3. Then the princes of Philistines said, What are these Hebrews doing here? And Achish said to the princes of the Philistines, is this not David, the servant of Saul, king of Israel, who has been with me these days or these years, and do this, and do this day I, I have found no fault in him, since he defeated, he defected to me. Now, if you read previously the, the preceding chapter, that's chapter 28, you will see that David that killed Goliath and Philistine. Philistine that was always the opponent or the enemy of Israel. Yeah. David defected. Because Saul was defected means you know to, to, to decamp or to go to another side. He ran away from the camp of Saul because Saul wanted to kill him. He ran to Philistine, the enemy nation. And they accepted him, he became one of their soldiers. Not just ordinary soldier, he had his own men. He had more than 400 men on his own side to support the enemy to fight Saul. Can you believe that? To fight his own nation, his own Israel, together with the enemy. How do you want to explain that? Because what he, the way of David pleased what? God. He made the worst number one enemy of his nation to become his friend. They were not, they were not taking care of him, providing for him. The king of, of Philistine was taking care of him, providing for him, taking care of him and his army. And he was living there. That was where he took refuge, in the land of the enemy. Because of what? The ways of David pleases the Lord. The ways of David pleased the Lord. Amen. Number two, I want to tell you, is even against Saul. When David destroyed, killed Goliath, he came to limelight. Everybody, I mean, his name come, came to spotlight. Everybody knew him. He became popular. And therefore, the popularity brought uh, 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 antagonism. He brought, he, he allowed Saul to begin to jealous him. Because he was, he was, he was lifted next to, next to Saul, the king. Even the praising more than king. Therefore, the king was angry. And he became the enemy of Saul. And I cannot comprehend, you know, when you have an enemy, and the, number, the church, the, 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 the priest, the royal priest, or the crown priest of Saul, 
was Jonathan. Which means if Saul died, amen, Jonathan was supposed to step in as the next king, isn't he? Yes. And therefore, when his father hated somebody because that person want to con wanted to contend with the kingdom, Jonathan was supposed to be another worst enemy to, to David, isn't it? Because I am supposed to be the king after my father. And I see one young child that is my age mate contending with my father to be the next king. I will fight the person also. As, as Jonathan. And we always make sure that I become the enemy of that person. But here, instead of Jonathan to be David's enemy, he found favor. First King chapter 17. Flip a little bit backward from there. Go to 17. So first King 20. First King chapter 20. I will read from verse verse, uh, verse 9 to save time. But if you, if you are at home, you can read from verse 1. Verse 9. But Jonathan said, Far be it from you. For if I knew certainly that evil was determined by my father to come to you upon you. Then, will I not tell you? Then David said to Jonathan, who will, you, who will tell me, or what if your father answers you roughly? And Jonathan said to David, Come, let us go out into the field. So both of them went out into the field. Then Jonathan said to David, The Lord God of Israel is witness. When I have sounded out my father sometime tomorrow, or the third day, and indeed there is good towards David, I do not send, and I do not send to you and tell you, may the Lord do so and much more to Jonathan. But if it pleases my father to do you evil, then I will report it to you and send you away. Amen. Amen. So and so on and so forth. You will see that verse 17 says, Now Jonathan again caused David caused David to to vow because he loved him for he loved him as he loved his own soul you see that jonathan loved david and even he was the one that even asked david that they should vow so they became, they became soul mates that is the son of his number one enemy in the land he became his best friend and soul mate why because david also did what david made his way to please the Lord. There are many ways David did that that I will not be able to mention today. If you see, if you have known the story of David in the book of First Samuel, before he, he actually was enthroned as a king, he was anointed many years before he became king. But he never, although he was anointed king, he did not wish that the king on, on the throne would die before him. He did not wish that the king died so that he can, he can go to the throne quickly. He, he respected the anointing of God upon the king. For the fact that he was, a, he was a prophet of God that anointed the king, David realized and he was afraid of the anointing upon the life of Saul. And even he had opportunity to kill Saul in many ways, he did not. Because he said, I will not lay my finger against God's anointed. Everything that had to do with God, he respected. He kept the ordinances of the Lord. He obeyed the Lord. He walks in the way that pleases the Lord. And whatever he did, he would ask God, God, are you sure you like what I've just done? Or sometime before he even did them, he would say, God, can I do this? Look at what happened, even at the process of what we just read in chapter 29. When he was supposed to go to battle with the Philistines to fight against Saul in Israel. Before he went back to the camp, his children and his wives were captured. Was he not supposed to just stand up and go for them? He still asked the Lord, God, can I go? Will I? Can I pursue? Can I overtake? Can I possess? And he was asking God all the way. Even things.
things that he was supposed to do, he would still ask him. When the way of a man pleases God, he will make even his enemies to be at peace with him. He will make his enemies to be at peace with him. The ways of Daniel pleases the Lord in the book of Daniel. And Daniel became, he, was, he, he got employment in the, in the palace of a king. Of, you know, a king that took them as slaves. A king that enslaved them. And he became employee of the king. Not only that he rise to be a governor. Because the way pleases the Lord. His enemies became his friend. When our way pleases the Lord, he made our enemy to be our friend. Now, I don't want to go too much into details of explaining to you. We all already know that if your way does not please the Lord, you cannot have favor in the sight of your friend, talk less of your enemy. But the reason why the Bible used enemy is that so that you can all know that the worst person around you will, you will find favor in their sight if your ways pleases the Lord. Let's turn back to the book of Proverbs where we are reading from. Amen. Let's go back to the Proverbs where we are reading from. If a way of a man pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemy. He said, even is, which means the worst person in the life, the worst enemy to you. The person that hates your gods or anything that belongs to you become your best friend. Now, quickly, because of our time, how do I walk my way to please the Lord? I have only a few more minutes. How do I walk to please the Lord? Number one, you must, it's the only three ways. There might be more than that. That's the only three that I want to tell you today. You must obey his instruction. David, David's enemies became his best friend because he obeyed every instruction of the law. He obeyed his status. What does the law want me to do? What does the law, what does he not want? What does he like? What does he like, not like? Because I want to begin to walk with the Lord. And I have to know all the things that he like and the things that he does not like. And how do I know that? You must begin to read more of the Bible to know what the Lord wants, what he does not want. If you read the Bible once in a while, you cannot know all the things that the Lord wants. How much of you here that know that if somebody owe you money for more than two, three years and he find, difficult, he find it difficult to pay, that you can actually let him go? It's the Bible that says that. When you have somebody that holds you money and you see that evidently, with all proofs, this person cannot pay me, cannot pay me, he has a lot of trouble. And he's been struggling. Then it is my right, willingly, voluntarily, to call the person and say, I relieve you of this loan or this debt. I cancel it. You can be free. The Lord bless you. But how many people knows that? How many people know that when somebody offends you, the next thing you look for is not to kill the person. Say, you wish so much that the person should die now. Because this person has offended me. I want him to die now. For you to make yourself, to make your ways to please the Lord, you need those three things. And I'm talking about number one, obedience to his instruction. Obedience. Psalm 1. Psalm number 1. I read from verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the, of the ungodly, or stand in the, sea, in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters, that brings forth his fruit in his seasons, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. You see, those are the people that are obeying the instructions of the Lord. You do not like to sit among the, among the, the counsel of the ungodly. Counsel of the ungodly. Pack of sinners. And the seat of the scornful. Those are the three things. Counsel of the ungodly. The stand.
part, the part of sinners. And the number three is what? The seat of the scornful. Cancel of the ungodly. Walking in the path of the ungodly. The, 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 the Egypt that you have left before. Going always back to Egypt in when you are making decisions. Living in sin all the time. Never out of sin. You must know that sin, diso sin is disobedient to the commandment of God. And therefore when you that have been saved continue to live in the sin that you have left. You are simply bringing more trouble to your ways. For instance, a believer that is saved and you still believe that you can, you can, you can, you can use your pen or paper to lie to government regarding taxes. You know, you can maneuver things and, and you lie in papers and all that. Don't you know that devil will use that one to trouble your future? So whenever, what, whatever trouble you begin to have when you are a child of God is as a result of your mistake that you're still living inside your God. If David has tried to kill Saul himself, he would have been dead before Saul. And the Lord would have changed his plans and appoint some, appointed somebody else. Because you do not, when there is a situation like that, you do not fight for God. You only leave him to fight and you continue to love. Because God the Bible says God is love. If David did not obey the principle of love and begin to fight Jonathan, begin to fight David, he would have been dead. God, because God will not be on the side. Because he will show that he can fight himself. Whenever you show that you have power to fight, you can defend yourself, you are wise enough, you are more intelligent, and the Lord leaves you to walk by yourself. And he will not be on your side. So your way pleases God when you obey his commandment. When you obey his commandment. Amen. Number two, your way pleases the Lord when you stand in his counsel. That's why I wanted you to read that verse, uh, Psalm, Psalm chapter 1. When you stand in God's counsel. Counsel that I mean is when you make him the decision maker of your life. Let's go play the Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs 3, we are still coming back to that psalm. Proverbs 3, quickly. I'll read from verse 5. Trust in the law with all your heart. Learn not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Do not be wise in your own ways. Fear the Lord. And depart from evil. It shall be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Amen. Amen. So when you begin to live in the counsel of God, first of all, it's obedient, don't forget, obedient to all his commandments. Keeping away from sin. Opposite of obedience is disobedience. Opposite of sin is righteousness. When you begin to live in righteousness, According to the book of John, 1 John chapter 3, from verse 6 downward. It says, anyone that practices righteousness is righteous. And the sinners are the children of the devil. So when you practice righteousness, you become obedient to the Lord. That is the word number one. And number two is to walk in his principle. There is a difference between obedience and walking with God. You can be obedient and not walking with God. I mean, what I'm saying is that you can keep the will of, I mean, the commandment of God, you don't lie, you don't commit adultery, you don't do this, you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't humanize, you don't do all those things, but you're, you are not working according to Him. I will give you an example, any one example. For instance, I can keep all the commandments of God, but here am I, I'm, 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 I want to get married, but I, I just I fall in love with an unbeliever. And everybody is telling me, I said, this is what I want to marry. I am a decent holy child of God. But this is what I like. And the Bible says, I will not begin to quote the Bible. The Bible says, the Lord will give me the desire of his heart. And my expectation has not been cut short. This is my expectation, this is my desire. I quite opposite to the plan of God for me. So what I'm saying in, in essence is that, if you are not walking in the counsel of the Lord, you are not walking... Your way does not please God. David obeyed God first. Then he began to ask God. God, can I go? You see, God, do I do? God, can I run? 
God, can I sit? God, do I travel? God, do I not travel? What does your word say about this decision that I want to make? What does your word say about this? God, do I hate? God, do I fight? You see? And at the end of the day, you will begin to see that your asking God to leave you, stay in the counsel of God will be leading you back to perfect obedience. Because ordinary obeying the word of God and not walking in his counsel, in his ways, will lead you to disobedience. Will bring you under the same sinner situation. For instance, the Bible says we must love all people. And you just have some people that you just don't like because maybe because of the, what you think, according to that verse 2 of the book of Proverbs chapter seven, uh, 16, it says, the ways of men are always good into their eyes. Maybe I have every right that somebody doesn't like me. Or somebody hurts me. I have every right to say I don't like the person, isn't it? But I will not be walking in the counsel of God, although I have kept his word. Although I'm his child, although I'm in the church. But I have just begun to hate somebody that he likes. Somebody that he died for. You see that? So, those things will begin to cause me more trouble than I expected. And I'll be finding myself in many more troubles. Because of my decision. But if I employ God in my decision, in my, I bring the counsel of God to my decision making. Although this person has hurted me, or hurt me, I don't need to fight back. Just like David did. I don't need to fight back, I just have to keep on loving. I just have to know that God died for these people. He died for them, and I keep on, even if they did any wrong, the Bible says we must not do wrong in terms of wrong. He said we should do good in place of, in place of any wrong that is done to us. He said, by so doing, you'll be heaping a heap of coal, hot coal, upon the head of your enemy. Because one day they will think, they say, upon everything I have done to this man, this woman, look at the way he's still doing good. I have to change my ways. If Paul, Saul got to a point, he was thinking like that. Say, I have done all my best. This man still loves me. David, I think I have to, I have to invite him. But because God has plotted that he, was, he must die, that was why his heart was continually strong. Otherwise, he has seen many reasons why he needed to change. He even got to a place he accepted David as the next king himself. He said it in his mouth. And Jonathan, even Jonathan, his son said, David, when you, when you finally become a king of Israel, because the Lord has anointed you, remember me and every of my household. When the way of a man pleases God, he makes evil. That evil means even the worst to become your friend. But when your way does not please God, in obedience to his word, because if you don't obey God, you will, you will hurt a lot of people. You will cheat, you will steal, you will commit adultery, and all those things lead to many enemies. But when your way pleases in obeying his word, the word that you obey will begin to open doors for you. It is your obedience that open door on heart, not disobedience, not prayer. Prayer is to fight against principalities and power of darkness. But to make things happen here on earth, you must take care of all those, I'm telling you. If your way please, does not please the Lord, no prayer can bring anything to you. For instance, I've seen people that call me and say, uh, please, I need prayer because everywhere I go, people always don't like me. That, that, it was a lady that said that to me. People don't like me and the people call me names of witch and all that. If your way does not please the Lord, He does not bring any good reputation or good name to you. He brings bad names. Even by, the, by showing your face, you are just coming. Some people are just talking already. Say, look at the bad, bad woman. Look at her face. Very bad. Very bad. Why? Because your way does not please the Lord. And yet you are a Christian. Many Christians, there are many Christians living that their ways does not please God. Many women, many men, many young and many old, their way does not please the Lord. And therefore, instead of them to use their life to win souls, their life is sending souls away from God. And you see some people saying, if this person is a Christian, I will never be a Christian. Because our way does not please the Lord. The way of David changed the mind of Saul. And the mind of many enemies around him. Before David died, the Bible says the Lord gave him peace all over around him. 
he calmed all his enemies down. And the reign of his son Solomon was the, the, the most peaceful reign in the time of the kings. Peaceful throughout the time of the kings. Until it became, because it was so peaceful and it was so rich, it began to fall away from God. Then began, that began another generational trouble. Because at the hand of Solomon, his way fell away from the plan of God. And his generation paid for it. Went away of a man. And the last one is, trust the Lord. Trusting the Lord. What did I call number one? Obedient to his commandment. Number two, stay in his counsel. Which means making sure. What I mean by being in his counsel is that make sure it's the Lord that does everything you do. Make sure that God agree whatever you do. Make sure that you have prayed and the Lord, you have searched the Bible. The Bible has confirmed and the word of God has confirmed and revelation, prophecy in the word of God or to you personally has confirmed that what you are doing is from God. Because if it's only from you, it's going to bring nothing but trouble to you. We are living in the end times where things are becoming more tough and more dangerous. Your way needs to please God. And number three is trusting Him always. Just like we read in that book of Proverbs. Trusting in Him. Trusting in Him. Trusting in Him. Trusting in Him. Trust all these three things that I just laid down, you'll be surprised that they link together. Law, the law of God and commandment of God link together. When the Bible talks about love, you will see that everything comes under love. When the Bible talks about commandment, you see that obedience and trust come under commandment. Because if you don't obey, and if you don't trust, if you don't obey him, you will not trust him. Because you don't trust somebody, you don't obey. Your ability to trust gives you makes you obedient to the person that you trust because you will trust that person's decision and therefore you'll be able to follow the pattern so the first one is obedient the second one is maintaining your stand in his counsel in anything you want to do marriage decision academics decision the choice of career the choice of where you want to live anywhere you want to move to because a child of god does not just appear for nothing you appear for the glory and the purpose of God. So by trusting him and making sure that you stand in his plan and purpose, you see yourself being the desire of the Lord. So that is what the Bible says by, if a way of a man pleases the Lord, it will make his enemy to be at peace with him. If you have not maintained those three stages, your way cannot please God. You have not even discovered many things that God wants or he does not want. As commandment, because you are not reading Bible daily, and therefore you are not living in this council. Your decision is based on what you think yourself, not what God says. It's going to be dangerous. Remember, don't forget that verse two always of sixteen. Proverb. He said, "The ways of men are constantly glued in their own eyes. They believe they are good, but they might not be in the presence of God, because God weighs the spirit." God weighs the purpose. God weighs according to righteous life, righteousness, not according to humanity. And your counsel must be in Him. If you stay in the counsel of God, it makes you escape trouble, problem, trap that is sent by the enemy. It makes even the enemy come from their camp to come and reveal the secret to you because you are living in the counsel of the Lord. When you are living for his purpose, when your, your life glorifies his name, when your daily life begins to work, God looks at you and is happy. Just like you look at Job, he was happy. He looked at Job, he was happy, and he said, Have you tried my servant? Have you considered my servant Job as upright before me? When your way makes the Lord happy, therefore, every of your enemy too will have no choice than to come and subject to you. When the heaven is not happy about your ways, there cannot be joy about your ways too. You will just see all enemies instead of seeing many friends. Because it's not pleasing God. When your way pleases God, every enemy will draw something from you. They have something that they need from you. And they have no choice. They just have to bow down to come to you. The 12 brothers of, of, of Joseph, 
Despite the fact that they hated Joseph, but, but for the sake of the ways of Joseph that pleased the Lord, that pleased the Lord, they all came doing what? Bowing to him. Because his way pleased the Lord constantly. When your way constantly pleased the Lord daily, living to glorify him, living to make him happy, living to praise him, living to make to do the purpose of your living. In what way is your life pleasing to the Lord? What do you do now that make God happy? What do you do about the unsaved souls? What do you do about reaching the people that are dying daily that don't know Christ? Is your life revealing the image of God to change them? Are you teaching them by your own lifestyle or you are condemning them through your own lifestyle? Are you building the kingdom of God or you are tearing the kingdom of God down? As I'm concluding today. Are you destroying the body of Christ or your way is building the body of Christ? I want us to be thinking as I'm speaking. Your way must please the Lord before it can make your enemies to become your friend. Otherwise, you will begin to draw enemies every day. If you begin to live to build the, 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 the house of God, you live to build the, the body of Christ, you live to build the kingdom of God on heart, the heaven is going to be happy about you. And those who make themselves your enemy, they become God's enemy. And the Lord will frustrate and torment them so well, just the way he tormented the enemies of David, and they will be coming to bow before you and ask forgiveness compulsorily against their wish. Because the Lord has showed that he was on your side. Just like the Lord showed in the book of Numbers 16, there was a story that we talk about that called the story of Korah, Data, and Abraham. They rose against Moses. But the Lord stood because Moses was what? He was in the plan and purpose of God. And the Bible says, when they refused to repent, their heart opened and they were swallowed. Then the story of Nehemiah. The, the, Nehemiah wanted to build the, the, the fallen walls of Israel. He was determined to do so. People rise against him, Shambhalat, Tobiah, and constantly opposing. But for the sake of the way of Nehemiah that pleased God, because he wanted to build the fallen ruin, the ruined walls, but the Lord stood for him and gave him victory. He fought for him. He said, it was not Nehemiah that fought. Nehemiah knew that they were his enemies. In many ways, they showed that they were enemies. But Nehemiah did not mind them. He was just focused on what he was doing. If you will be focused on God, on the kingdom of God, and not minding that you have any enemy that hates you or don't hate you, you love them if they hate you. Do the best thing you can do. Pray for them. Release them from your mind. Forgive them. And you'll see things working for you. Before I close today, I have only two, three minutes. I want us to read from the book of Matthew, where we are I'm running up with this. We, we, do, we do recite this word all the time, but we don't look at it very well. Matthew, the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6, and I'll read from verse 8. We read this every time. Some of us, even from a childhood, from when I was in, in, in Christian school, I used to say about this. You know, even, even unknowingly to us, I, I, went to, I went to finish my primary school in, in our village that time, when the, I was brought from the north, and the primary, I went to primary five and six there, and that school was a Christian school, Baptist school, and we used to say, our father, who has in heaven, all those things. We call it law prayer, but we, it didn't mean anything to anybody. But I want you to look at it today as we close. Can we read from verse 8? One, two, go. Therefore do not lie like them. For your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Verse 9. In this manner, therefore pray, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on heart. As it is in heaven. Pause. Stop. You see, after you praise the Lord, you say, Your will, your kingdom come. Your will be done on heart. As it is in heaven. Which means, as your angels obey you in heaven. 
I am here to obey you here on earth. Your will will be done in my life on earth as it is in heaven. But most of us just read that, we don't even understand the meaning. We never live for the will of God. We never live for the purpose of God. And yet, we pray many prayers, we want a lot of things to happen. If your way does not please the Lord, your, your friends will become your enemies. And the enemy will pursue more. But when your way pleases the Lord, it will make even your worst enemy to bow before you and to become your friends. Continue reading. 11. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. You see that? Wait. A lot of people do not feel forgive and therefore God is a God that forgives. He forgives us. That is why we are still living. But in our turn, we refuse to forgive. Unforgiveness makes people to, come, to divorce their wives and their husbands. Unforgiveness makes some people even to leave, to get separated. You say, I want to, I'm moving from this, my house, because my next, next door neighbor does not like me. And therefore, I don't want to set you, I don't want to forgive, I just want to move away from here. Even some people, they sell their houses because they don't like their neighbors. They will sell it. You know, you can't just move if it's your own. But they will sell it, they will go and buy another one because they hate that neighbor. If, if it's not their own, they sell it and they move. Sorry, if, if it's their own, if it's their own houses, they, they, you know you, can just, you cannot just move away from your house. You, they have to sell it and go. But if you are renting, they just move out. But we must make sure, because we are the planting of the law, according to our message about three weeks ago, we are the planting of the law in that area. To show the image of God as it is in heaven on heart. And to forgive as they, for, they offend us. Because God also forgives us. Continue reading. 13. And do not lead us into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. For yours in the kingdom. And the power and the glory. Forever and ever. For if you forgive men their trespasses. Your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men, their trespasses, neither will your Father in heaven forgive yours. If the way of a man pleases the Lord, he makes his enemy to be at peace with him. You are the one to start the procedure of making your way to please the Lord. You don't ask God to say, God, come and make me to make your way to please. No. You must stand and say, what am I doing now that is not giving glory to God? What am I doing now contrary to the laws and the principles of God? What am I doing contrary that God does not like, that the heaven does not approve? What are my ways, my decisions, my counsel, the advice that I, that I listen to, my personal advice to myself, people's advice to me, the way I am working, what I am doing at work, in my house, in my marriages, in anybody, with anyone? What way do I relate with people? Am I too difficult or too simple? Amen. We must manifest whatever we study in the Word of God. We must not just be the reader and the sayer. It's easy to talk. It's easy to, to read Bible. It's easy to discuss Bible. But we must begin to live it so that we begin to see our life going to the direction of living for God. And it will bring our enemy to be at peace with us all about us. Let's rise on our feet. Begin to tell the Lord, Father, teach me your way, O Lord. Teach me the way that I might understand your precepts. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Father, teach me your way, Lord. Jesus, teach me your way so that I can be able to understand your, your precepts in the name of Jesus. Father, teach me your way, Lord. For I have learned today that if my way pleases you, and even my worst enemy will become my friend. Lord, teach me your way. Begin to pray. Do not deceive ourselves. Let us pray seriously. This is important in our life. This is one of the reasons why we are happy. This is one of the reasons why we, 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 we're supposed to live in a happy atmosphere. We're supposed to be living back here with people. To have good reputation and, and integrity. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Let my way please you. Have 
master, teach me your way, Father. Show me your principles, Lord. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, keep me in your counsel, O God. Have mercy on me. Increase my level of trust for you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. O oh Lord, my Father. O oh Lord, my Father. Silence with the blood of Jesus. Silence. Every satanic voice Every and demonic counsel against my ways, Lord. Yes. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Father, silence by fire and the blood of Jesus. Every evil counsel, satanic advice, demonic counseling from me and from people against my way and my relationship with you. Silence them, O oh Lord. Silence evil voice. Silence satanic languages against my life, against my ways. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And the number three, you say, O oh Lord, my Father. O oh Lord, my Father. Let my ways not be right in my own eyes. Let my way not be right. But in your sight, O oh Lord. Let all my decisions that I will make, O oh Lord, be according to your kingdom. And according to your principles, begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, I, want, I don't want to be wise in my own ways, Lord. I don't want to be wise in my own ways. I don't want my way to be high, to be good in my own my sight. I want to walk before you, Lord, and to be perfect before you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, lead me to perfection. Lead me in the path of righteousness. For your name's sake, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for you, are Lord, and glory be to the name in the highest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you because you are Lord. Jesus, we give you all glory. King of kings, we honor and we adore you. Let your name be glorified. Father, Lord, as we go, let your presence go before and after us.